What's up guys, welcome back to a brand new video. My name is Richie and today we're taking it back to the phone reviews and uh, what I've got in front of me here, as you can tell by the title also, is the Galaxy Z Fold 3 5G. What a phone. Honestly, I have really enjoyed the past month and a bit that I've been spending with it. Um, yeah, it's been a, a, an incredible phone to say the least. Uh, you know, when you unfold it, you just feel like an absolute boss and you have this amazing display, which I'm just going to turn the brightness up. In all its glory, I like this default wallpaper too. It um, fits the phone very well, but um, I thought I'd just do a quick review on it because, you know, <laughs> this it's it's something that I want to talk about. And uh, I've, I've wanted to get into a foldable for a long time and finally have decided now is the time. Uh, so I've got a couple of disclaimers before I go ahead and start the video. Firstly, um, this is not going to be a professional review. I'm just sitting here behind my camera and talking to you guys. Uh, this is going to be more like a conversation or how I would uh, go ahead and like talk to one of my friends if I if they ask me about this phone. Um, and the review style is going to be very similar to that of like Flossy Carter or uh, Zolotech or Dank Pods. Um, so if you kind of hear any references from those guys, that's who I normally watch for my phone reviews. Uh, so I'll leave their links in the description down below, not because they need any exposure from me, but just as like a reference list. Um, so, you know, people don't catch me out copying and all that. Secondly, I am first and foremost an iPhone user. So my my daily driver is an iPhone and uh, I don't think I can have a Galaxy or any Android device for that matter to be a, a main phone. This is my secondary phone and I've been using it as that and mainly been using it as a media consumption device to scroll through social media, to watch videos, watch YouTube and all that. And the last thing is that this video is probably going to be a little bit long so I'll leave down uh, on the playhead you'll be able to see like some chap chapters and in the description below so if there's something that you want to skip to. Uh, then you can go ahead and do that. But uh, basically the structure is I'm going to talk about what I don't like uh, hardware-wise, software-wise, and then the things that I do like about the phone and my overall thoughts. Uh, so yeah, this video uh, might be a train wreck, but uh, it's the first time that I'm kind of doing like a full in-depth review on a device. So uh, I, I don't think I've, I think that's pretty much everything. Um, and again, like if you disagree with any of my opinions or if you have a differing opinion or you want to have a conversation, please leave a comment below. Um, I'd I love responding to comments. I love having initiating conversations with you guys uh, and talking about tech because that's what I'm here for. Uh, I, I'm I'm a technology lover, um, and although I am an Apple user first and foremost, like I don't pledge allegiance to these companies. I had to pay for these phones by myself. Uh, but you know, I'll, I like what I like, and I'll call out something if it's not good. That's pretty much all the disclaimers, I believe. And uh, you know, it's been four minutes already, so let's go ahead and uh, start on the review with. Uh, a little TLDR. So my overall opinion on this phone is it's it's so awesome. Like I love the fact that you know you can fold it up and it's like a perfectly usable little stealthy uh, little candy bar phone. And it's you know you can kind of use it with one hand except you know kind of reaching the top. But you've got your finger gestures that you can program. And then when you want to open something up or expand it, you've got the beautiful inner display. And just the fact that we can have a phone that folds in this day and age is absolutely crazy to me. And the amount of software features and just the things that this form factor affords you is quite incredible to say the least. This phone has kind of reignited my passion or my excitement for new technologies because the first uh, the the only other time that I felt this way about a phone is when the HTC One M7 came out. Uh, back in 2013 and that was one of the first android phones that really you know put up a fight against the iphones at the time the htc was the kind of the first to focus on build quality and uh, audio with uh, the first phone being sporting dual speakers um, i actually know htc had been pioneer of dual speakers there were htc phones with dual speakers before but that was like the first kind of mainstream flagship phone that everybody knew uh, that had beats audio and dual speakers and it had a gorgeous display uh, now it wasn't without its pain points but uh, that phone was far from perfect and so is this but it's the kind of personality of the phone uh, and just the it just it, it, you know I, I don't even have the words to describe how cool this is you just feel like an absolute boss when you unfold this now I haven't really been out in public with this phone too much but you know hearing stories from other people that have the flip and the fold 
you know opening it up in public you you're bound to get attention um especially if there are people that love technology around you when you're in a phone war um you know not very many people actually have these fo phones i don't I, I haven't actually seen anyone in public with a a fold uh, except at my old job when i served customers who actually had these phones and uh, that was only a handful of people um, but it's something that's extraordinary <laughs> extraordinarily unique and special and so technologically advanced uh, it's crazy i love this phone and i'll get into more of that in the second half of this video but let's start off with a couple things that i don't like these are mainly going to be hardware wise to begin with and then uh, we'll i'll uh, go through some software quirks that i am not a fan of the first thing that i don't like is the retail price here in new zealand it's 2699 dollars for the 256 gig model and that's a lot of money for a phone now granted you do get the foldable screen and in, in new zealand at least um there's no other foldables on the market except for the flip uh so you gotta pay to play but i just have a bit of trouble spending more than two thousand dollars for a phone in this day and age especially when you can go and buy like uh you, you don't have to go too far you think about like an s s21 ultra which pound for pound is a better phone um when it comes to actually being a smartphone but obviously you don't get the folding display i don't know i just have a bit of a, a, a trouble spending that much for a phone and then you have to pay an extra 200 dollars for the 512 this should have came 512 standard especially because there's no sd card slot which i'll talk about a little bit later um and the to rub salt in the wound samsung th these device the samsung devices depreciate like crazy um i'll tell you a little story i bought a note 9 back when that first came out i bought the 512 which retailed for two thousand dollars in new zealand so it was a bit tgh already and i sold it maybe seven or eight months later because i had gotten a work phone for about 880 dollars uh, i mean i gotta give credit to the guy that bought it who was really negotiating his way down and i probably shouldn't have let it go for that price but i did and uh it just it hurt a little bit you know yeah um thankfully i didn't spend the full two thousand dollars but i still lost money on a phone which i shouldn't have in the first place since i got a really good discount for it my rule is never pay retail price for a samsung phone uh and i suppose like this is an exception because it's so cool but yeah just uh beware of that especially if you're planning on reselling the phone in the future or if you're worried about that kind of thing they just samsung phones don't hold their depreciate or they don't hold their value like they do with iphones uh second thing that i don't like no charger no headphones no dongle in the box i don't like that um this is the box that it comes in we'll move this off to the side real quick uh notice something about the box it's very thin and when you open it up you get well you get a little bit of plastic um to protect the phone you get this little box and uh that's about it and in here i won't uh we'll we'll, we'll do it for the dramatic effect you got your usb c to usb c cable cool you have your little book which doesn't really have any information on it at all it just tells you how to install the sim card pluck that file to the side and that's it you know back when the fold one came out you got galaxy buds you got the charger in the box and like the box unfolded it was like some sort of magical experience with the fold 2 they still kept that cool box but only the charger was in there at least they gave you the brick but this one you're paying again going back to the price 2699 new zealand dollars and they, they couldn't even include a charger in the box um i don't know i it's if, i don't know if it's petty or not but I have, I have plenty of chargers at home and I don't really need to worry about it. I don't even plug this into the wall half the time. I plug it into a computer to charge or what I use a wireless charge pad. But for the people that are using this who are switching from iPhone or, you know, they're coming from an older Galaxy and they don't have the charger and they it's just something else that you have to buy, it, it, it rubs salt on the wound. Um, so, yeah, I don't like that. I don't like the trend of um, no chargers in the box um, and then no dongle as well. Uh, now if you want to if you have a nice set of wired headphones you have to go buy that separately this one obviously does not have a headphone jack which you know most people have wireless headphones these days but it would have been nice of them to include that dongle in case you had like a speaker that you wanted to plug into with an aux cable or a car stereo um yeah kind of a, a little bit annoying and the funny thing is i don't think in, in, in new zealand at least samsung doesn't sell dongles 
uh, U- uh, the USB-C to headphone jack dongle. Uh, you have to buy Apple's one, which is, yeah, I find that a little bit funny. Um, anyways, no charger in the box. I don't like that. The next thing I don't like is the the color choices and this phantom black, uh, which I think the look of it overall looks sick. Like this, you know, it's nice satin feel. It feels good in the hands. But as you can see, I, I wiped this phone down when I first started the video and it's already collected a whole bunch of fingerprints. So I have to go in and wipe it down. You have to take a cloth to it. And even if it's a, even though it is a matte back, you can still get smudges and fingerprints on it. Um, also, uh, I had to buy it in black. I really wanted the, the green, the money green, but there was going to be a month shipping delay. And I was like, I'd rather just get the black and, you know, I can, I, I don't really mind. But yeah, the, the fact there's only three colors and they're not that exciting. Uh, and they take the, especially if you wanted the silver or the green, it took ages to ship. Um, I don't know, Samsung, maybe there were some things out of their control. Uh, but yeah, it's, you know, when you... When you have a phone like this, people want the color choices straight up. Uh, and who knows if they're going to pull some uh, pull some stunt where they have like different colorways uh, when the phone's like three months old and you pass its return period and you can't swap it out if you want the new color. Um, it's likely that they'll do that. But um, yeah, something that I, I don't like. I will likely get a... D- I, I actually have ordered a dbrand skin to cover the back at least. Uh, and then if you use a case, you know, you kind of get rid of that problem. And to be fair, there's no oleophobic coating in the world at the moment that can repel fingerprints um, without and all smudges. Uh, and the other thing as well, the inner display gets smudged up real bad, real fast uh, because of the plastic screen protector. Uh, I don't know what kind of oleophobic coating Samsung's using on this, but it's not the best in the world. Uh, and it kind of gets annoying, especially if you're out in public and you've got a whole bunch of smudges on there and you're in the light and it reflects off and it just doesn't look very nice and the fingerprints follow what's on the screen and, uh, you know, if you don't have a cloth in public or you, you know, it's just, it's a risky job uh, rubbing this down. Uh, <laughs> that sound a bit, that sounds a bit sus, but yeah, I don't like the, the fact that this phone smudges up so easily. Next, uh, the speaker placement when the phone is rotated. Uh, so I've got a quick little video queued up um, and say I want to watch it in landscape mode. You know, I've got the video playing. It's cool, got a little non-copyright so I don't get copyright strike. Um, the speakers are a place here. There's one here. I don't know if that's... Oh, let me pause that real quick. I don't know if you can see that on camera. Um, because my camera's kind of a bit weird in terms of the lens set up and the focus, but there's one speaker down here, one speaker at the top, and when you hold it this way with the cameras facing up, you block the speakers, and, you know, the simple solution would be to turn it the other way around, but if you're playing a game, the phone gets hot, and this is where the processor is, so you're holding that, and it's hot, so the, the comfortable way is to hold it like this, but then you block the speakers. Now, maybe they could have put it, like, up here or on the sides or something, I don't know, but... Just, just a little bit silly to me. Uh, and then the next thing that I don't like is the camera bump. It's very long and very big. And the reason that I have this little book here is so you don't hear it rocking on the table. So let's move that out of the way for a sec. The phone actually like rocks. It doesn't lay flat. And then you tap it and it... You hear that? Still happens when it's open as well. Not as bad, but when you're trying to tap on it when it's on a table you're not gonna have a good time now the other the other annoying thing about the big camera hump is I've got this wireless charge pad and when I put the phone on top you can see that the hump kind of creates a gap in between the phone and the wireless charger now this is not good for efficiency and at first I was a bit I was a bit apprehensive to put this on the charging pad but it is it works and it charges fine but I can't help but think that you're losing a little bit of efficiency thanks to that tiny little gap there. And I don't know if you can pick it up on camera and you might need to have like a different angle. There you can see the gap there. You can see this table straight through. Whereas if you had a regular phone with a somewhat decent camera bump, but you know, it lays flat and the pad makes contact with the phone. So maybe they could like have at least like moved the flash up here or something or made it a made it a horizontal camera that would have been better it does look good but it, it's just a bit big uh, for no reason 
And the last thing that I don't like about the hardware is the long-term durability concerns. Now, the fold durability has always been kind of like a controversial topic, and it's part of the reason why I, it's held me back a little bit, I suppose. Um, now, this inner display is what freaks me out, especially like the screen protector. Now, it's a plastic screen protector, and I'm just worried that if I do scratch it up or if I need to get it replaced, if I choose an aftermarket one, I might damage the display. Really, the only way to replace this is if you send the phone into Samsung and get them to do it. But I don't know how much that costs. If someone can tell me, that would be great. Put it in the description, uh, in the in the comments below. And the other thing is, you're going to be without your phone for a little while, just for a screen protector. Uh, now, granted, the durability is actually pretty good. They've upgraded it on on this year's model, and I'll get into that when I talk about the things that I do like. Um, and phone buffs test uh, that if you've got, if you guys have seen that his durability test showed that this phone can take a bit of abuse now it's not a fragile phone like i thought that the display would be soft when i was tapping on it but it actually feels like glass and it feels it doesn't feel like it's going to cave in when you touch it um but i'm just a bit afraid that maybe a little bit of dust is going to get in there and it's going to mess up the display or i'm just going to drop it in the wrong way after the one year of the galaxy premiere fold concierge service whatever they call it um once that expires and i can't get my screen replacement for the for a discount um that just kind of freaks me out but to be fair i wouldn't have bought the phone if i didn't want to gamble with the fact that i could break it um and it's just one of those things that you kind of have to to think about and sacrifice if you are wanting to get into a foldable um so yeah it's just something to consider i suppose especially if you're going to spend two thousand six hundred and ninety nine dollars on it just one thing as well on the price if you can get it at a discount try and you know uh take advantage of like a carrier deal if they give you like a monthly credit or samsung i know they at launch they did like a 300 dollars voucher i don't know if they're still doing it now but you know try and get something out of the deal uh, i was thank uh, thankfully able to get this phone discounted from its retail price um which you know i i wouldn't have probably bought the phone if i didn't get the discount so uh yeah there you go right Woo. getting into it a uh, couple of software things that i don't like about the phone um the first one is the continuity between apps on uh, from the cover screen to the main screen now it is something that has been improved especially since the fold one uh but the best way to uh, to kind of demonstrate this and it doesn't happen with all apps most apps are pretty well optimized but there might be some kind of obscure apps that just don't work properly the biggest and most drastic example is apple music now i don't imagine apple has too many android developers pouring all the resources into developing apple music for android but as you can see here there's like a kind of bezel at the the top and the bottom and it just doesn't scale properly and then when i open up the phone to use it in cover uh, in in the main screen it doesn't open in the main screen so basically what's happening here is there's two different versions of the app the cover screen uses the the uh, a smartphone style app and then the main display takes it over into tablet mode now the problem is when let's say i play play a song on here cool you know i obviously won't play anything because i'm going to get a copyright strike and, and then i close the display i go about my day and then i take my phone out of my pocket and i want to change the song and i go back into apple music it has to restart the app uh, and that is a, it's really annoying because obviously it stops the music what's the solution um i suppose use spotify or use youtube music or whatever but you know I, this that's the most kind of dramatic example that i can think of and it's not obviously not going to be applicable because who what android users going to be using apple music unless you get it like free with a plan or you're coming from ios which i am yeah it's just one of those things and I don't know if I can get it to do it now, but YouTube, um, YouTube was a bit of a culprit as well. So this is your view when you're in the cover display mode. And uh, sometimes I would exit out of it and then open it up and go into YouTube and the display wouldn't scale and it would look like it was just a massive wide smartphone. Uh, now, obviously it's not doing it. And I think I tried to get it, um, I tried to get it to exemplify this in the last take that i tried to shoot which was a train wreck in, it, in and of itself and it didn't do it either so maybe youtube's done an update uh, which is good like i think the pace at which developers are, are kind of changing this on their phones is uh changing the apps to work with the foldable aspect ratio like instagram you know it's just obviously blown up um on 
you know, <laughs> flossy carded with white shoes on the keyboard. Um, it's obviously blown up and it's a unique experience, I'll, I'll say that, uh, but some of the apps just aren't optimized correctly. Now, you can go into settings and there's the Samsung Labs. If we go into advanced features, you can go into Labs and change that kind of, you can change a few things about the aspect ratios and apps that auto rotate and all that good stuff, but it's still far from perfect. The other thing that I don't like between going from the cover screen to the main screen is the uh, text size. Like you can't make the text bigger on the, uh, on the different displays. So what I, in, in an ideal world, I'd love to have a uh, dis the text size bigger on this cover screen and then have it kind of smaller on the main screen because obviously I can see it, it's, it's a bigger display. Uh, but you can't do that. And the other thing is you can't do orientation lock as well. So obviously, um, you know, you can rotate the display and have it in landscape and that's all well and good. And uh, when I use a regular smartphone, the orientation lock is normally locked in portrait because I don't like having the apps flip over in landscape, especially when I'm in bed. Um, the only exception I'll make is I'll unlock it if I'm using maps. With this phone, um, when you're in, say, Chrome or something, it just makes sense to be able to flip um, the display because you get a wider view of, of what you're browsing. It's like samsung.com for an example. Uh, but when you close the display and you go into the main screen, I wish I could just enable the portrait lock for the 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 cover screen because no one's going to use this in portrait mode. I don't know anyone that would do this. Why would you use it? It's kind of like, it's just a weird aspect ratio to use this in, um, in landscape mode. Like why, you know, pictures just, there's just, why would you do that? <laughs> and I'm, I'm failing it trying to find words to even describe why someone would do this. But yeah, I wish they could change that. They can definitely change that with a software update. So if Samsung, if you're listening, um, fix that up. Now, the last thing that I don't like about this phone is uh, some usual gripes with Android and Samsung uh, that I have, uh, especially coming from an iPhone user. Now, these are gonna be a little bit petty, especially if you're a diehard Samsung fan. So, um, you know, maybe you wanna skip this part, but uh, the thing that I don't like, uh, some of the things I don't like, so uh, there's a, a few unoptimized apps that just don't work as well on Android as they do on iOS. Um, now, Twitter, Instagram and stuff, like they were culprits, Snapchat especially was really bad. Um, they've improved it for sure, but just the experience of the apps is just not as smooth, it's not as nice as iOS. Uh, mainly because developers develop for iOS in the first place and they port to Android and they just kind of, it's just like an afterthought. Um, so I don't like that. The other thing I don't like is when I listen to music on this, the sound quality and the sound signature is just a little bit different compared to Apple. I definitely prefer iOS's sound signature and the audio processing. And I think part of it is to do with iOS using AAC if you're connected to a Bluetooth device and when you stream like with AirPods or Beats. Whereas, um, Androids tend to use like SBC or some kind of different codec. It's kind of getting a bit technical there, but um, yeah, I, I just not the biggest fan of how the sound comes out of this. Granted, the dual speakers do sound quite good. Uh, and uh, the other things, uh, one of the biggest things that I don't like is the, the keyboard. Now, I'm using the Samsung default keyboard because it's got the split in the middle and I, I think it makes more sense, especially if you're typing on this tablet form factor. Uh, and it's good. It, it's okay, like, just, I think some of the auto prediction and the kind of touch detection algorithms are just not on par as they are with iOS. Now, you can change the Gboard, but you don't get that split in the middle, um, at least not without some heavy tweaking. So I'm sticking to the Samsung keyboard for now. Uh, and like, uh, also like emojis are just weird. They're not as good as they are on iOS. I mean, if you use, if you like emojis, then that's going to be a deal breaker for you. Maybe, maybe not. But it's really bad when you're in in cover display mode because of the smaller display. Like it's workable. Um, let me. Oh no, I'm not even going to use autocorrect. Um, and I'm doing this behind the camera, so it's not as um, it's not going to be as good as if I was actually concentrating on typing. But Again, touch algorithm and detection is not as good as well as like palm detection. You know, sometimes if I swipe up, it'll like uh, accidentally catch the bottom on the main display and it'll just 
cycle through all the apps and you know there's just it's just not as good as detecting it's not as good as ios is detecting unwanted presses um and then lastly the auto brightness algorithm is so dim-witted on samsung phones i have no idea why they haven't fixed it to this date but there are some <laughs> granted it has gotten a little bit better but there are some instances where i need to change the brightness because it's just kind of it, it doesn't do what i want it to do uh, say for example I'm in bed and the sun's shining into my room it doesn't know whether to brighten the display or dim it because it thinks that you know obviously I'm still in a dark room but there's sun coming through iOS doesn't have that problem and yeah it's just the auto brightness could be a lot better now what's the solution turn off auto brightness do it manually but I like having the auto brightness because there are some moments where I just want it to be seamless Whew. okay that's a lot of things that I don't like. Um, now I'm going to take a little break and we're going to get into why you should buy a Z Fold and what I do like about this phone. So be right back. Okay, let's go ahead and talk about some things that I do like about this phone. Um, and as you might recall from the TLDR, I, I love this phone and it's so sick. It's gotten me just excited about new technology and uh, let's get into why. A um, couple of things before, um, hopefully this video hasn't been a drag so far. Hopefully the camera focus has been good as well. I'm using a, a new lens um, and I modified some settings from the previous uh, recording of this uh, review. So hopefully it's a little bit better this time around, but um, if there are some focus issues, I do apologize and I'll try and fix them next time around, but I'm not re-recording this video because it takes a long time and I'm gonna have to edit it and that's gonna take even more time. Anyways, uh, let's go ahead and talk about what I do like. The first thing that I like, is the build quality. Now, for a foldable phone, Samsung has absolutely knocked it out of the park. They did an incredible job in building this phone. It feels solid, it feels, it just feels built really well. And you'll understand, you'll know what I'm talking about if you have actually uh, held one in person. Um, now, granted, if you have the fingerprints on it, you need to do, keep the, keep the cloth handy on you. Um, but apart from that, it feels really well. The the smooth, smooth silkiness of the phantom black, which I'm gonna ruin when I put the skin on it, but um, I'd rather have no fingerprints. And as I said, I would, I, I expected the display to feel soft. And I remember when I played with the Fold 1 back when I was in Melbourne, and I don't know, it just felt a little bit more fragile than I, this, this feels a lot more solid than I remember. Like, I expected it to, you know, you'd be able to kind of push down on it and, like, maybe your finger would go through, but this feels solid. The hinge is built really well. Um, you know, you can stand it up like this to use flex mode, and it do it stays open. It doesn't, like, it doesn't flop around. Um, now, when I do, there, there have been a few instances where I would kind of close it slightly and there would be a little click, but I think that might be just the mechanism of the phone and like you can hear the brushes working to clean the hinge and um, avoid any dust uh, which is really cool uh, but overall this phone is built very well now there are some kind of issues for some reason I think the international versions of this phone have like they have plastic all over the phone when you uh, even when you unwrap it from the plastic that comes in the box now there's the the screen protector here which I've, I'm going to keep intact but it is starting to peel up here I don't know if you can see that um, so I'm going to try and keep that on as best I can but this is not a big deal you can replace it there's a sticker on the hinge which I recommend you remove um, but if you're going to be using a case uh, now so I'm just going to reach over and grab my this is my Aramid fiber case which you know I, I'm I love these kinds of cases I have them for all my phones and I've had to put a little magnet on this one um, for my car in case I do use this for nav the biggest problem is like I would recommend if you do have the international version and uh, you are thinking about removing the plastic leave the one that comes on the 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 rail next to the cover display on because when you put this on and you don't use a sticker you don't you don't peel up the sticker because I I want to I want to be able to take off and and put back on these cases. I don't want this to be a permanent thing. The problem with that is it slides around a lot, and I don't know if it's going to show up on camera, but you can see like there there are slide marks on here, and you can't rub them off. Which they are uniform. I think you may be able to see them if if I can get the camera to focus down here. But they are uniform, so that doesn't bother me. But if it's something you're worried about, 
like the if dirt gets in between it's definitely going to scratch the screen protector as well so that's just something to think about but the screen protector is easily replaceable you can't there's not much you can do about an aluminium side rail um, but the phone is hefty it is built very well and a fun fact is that it's actually about the same size as an iphone mini now this is the magsafe battery pack and it actually fits perfectly here as you can see um, and it charges the phone just fine and it's probably a better charging solution than a standard wireless charging pad because um, you know you can line it up with the uh, the camera lens there and the only thing that it's missing is the magnet so obviously it just falls off um, but if this had the magnets this would be perfect for it um, I don't know if there's a way to put the magnets on here so you can use the MagSafe battery but that would be really sick yeah but it's basically the same size as an iPhone mini or the same width rather as you can see here I've got my 13 mini which I, I am daily driving this is like my main iPhone um, and you'll get a review on it similar to this uh, in the in the near future I love this phone <laughs> it's so cute look at it so yeah that makes it easier to kind of hold and wrap your hands around compared to like a 12 Pro Max where it's like massive or an S21 Ultra for that matter um, this is actually the same height or no it's actually a little bit shorter than an S2 uh, in a than a 12 Pro Max um, so yeah there you go uh, overall the size is good it is a little bit heavier than a regular phone but I like a heavy phone I don't mind having that because to me heavy means premium uh, it also has water resistance so it's definitely something that's nice to have if you are using this as your main phone you do take it to the beach you take it to the pool and you get pushed in um, it's just a little extra peace of mind now it's obviously not going to be the most you know it's not going to survive deep water diving but no phone is going to survive deep water diving so take it with a grain of salt um, it's just something that that's less to worry about especially if you're coming from uh, an earlier fold Samsung has definitely knocked it out of the park with the build quality it feels solid it doesn't feel fragile now obviously you don't want to be treating it like a brick you don't want to be treating it like a cat phone if you've seen one of those and you can throw it around um, treat it like a regular phone uh, don't be too rough with it and uh, the, it, it will withstand some general smartphone abuse the next thing that I like about this phone is the display this displays plural because there are two now it's got 120 hertz it's so smooth it looks so sick and obviously it's not going to be picked up on camera but it is something that you can notice in person and one thing also is that uh, when I had my S20 Ultra which I did an unboxing for and I did a little initial impressions um, earlier uh, probably about two years ago now the novelty of the 120 hertz display on that kind of wore off for me and I don't know why I think maybe part of it is because that was a a static 120 hertz it wasn't an adaptive display but that novelty wore off for me really quick and I just didn't care for it um, you know I'd notice it from time to time but I'd be going between an iPhone and and the Galaxy and I just I don't care for it and now my iPad has ProMotion and again I don't care for this I, I don't notice a massive difference and I, it's not like that I use the iPad and I go to like an iPhone and a MacBook and it's like oh I, I suddenly can't use it but with this one it's just I notice it and maybe it's something to do with Samsung improving their technology and um, you know having the adaptive display uh, now granted I don't mind going between a 60 Hertz and a 120 display it does it's not a big deal breaker for me but just having that you know covered uh, in a display 7.6 inches of AMOLED glory it's absolutely breathtaking now when you're scrolling through social media if I pull up reddit or something um, if it'll load you know you're scrolling through all the comments and stuff it just looks so smooth so so buttery it's it's amazing with the uh, adaptive display it ramps down so uh, it saves a little bit of battery now uh, speaking of battery um, I actually was gonna put that in my don't likes but the battery life is like uh, I'm neutral on it like it's it's meh it it's okay it's not the it's, it doesn't blow me away it's not 13 Pro Max level battery it's not s21 level ba battery but it gets me through the day and you know I'm not looking for a charger and the cool thing about the battery on this phone is that you can enable a feature uh, on here called protect battery and more battery settings so you can enable that here and it locks the battery capacity at 85% so when you put it on a charger it won't charge above 85% and that's brilliant for maintaining your overall battery health 
Now, I don't need 100% battery because, I'm first of all, this isn't my main phone and I'm mostly using it around the house because I don't go anywhere these days because of all the coronavirus out there. Um, so having that feature is great. I can just chuck it on a wireless charger and if I forget about the phone, it, you know, it caps the battery charge and, uh, you know, I, it's just one less thing to worry about for me, especially if you're going to keep this phone long term, I'd recommend turning that feature on, but if you're a, a hard user, you're a savage, you're, you know, using the phone all day and you need the fast charging and you need the phone to be at 100%, then don't worry about it, but it's a nice to have and I wish that iOS had that feature as well. Um, but yeah, going back to the, the displays, like even the cover display itself is quite, is very nice. Um, it's also the same 120 hertz and it's a pleasure to scroll through, especially when you're walking down the street and you're scrolling through, let's say Twitter or your favorite social media app. And it's just so smooth. It looks so good. The colors are popping. It's great for consuming media content. That's the main reason why you're buying the phone is this massive cover display. Oh, sorry. This massive main display. I'm getting those terms mixed up. Right, next thing that I, that I like, uh, performance, minimum hiccups, uh, Snapdragon 888, and finally, thank God, Samsung is putting the Snapdragon variants in the New Zealand market, in the international market, because these, those Exynos chips, like, granted, you don't really notice a massive difference, but like, it's just, it sucks knowing that there are other parts in the world that get a better processor than you. Uh, so I'm glad that they only make the Snapdragon variant of the Fold and flip phones, um, so that's one thing you don't have to worry about if you're buying it from overseas and it's nice and silky smooth especially paired up with the 120 hertz i've had minimum hiccups like you can go into a game and it loads nice and quick it's just use clash of clans as an example and turn the volume down just in case i get like copyrighted for it but as you can see again that going back to that display it looks it's just amazing um now this is my kind of second town hall 8 account um but yeah, the performance, it's nice and smooth now. It does warm up, obviously, if you're playing a game. And there's minimum hiccups. Apps stay in memory. Like, if I go back to, uh, like, Chrome, it's still going to be on the same page. And then I go back to Instagram, it's still going to be on the same thing that I was looking at earlier. 12 gigs of RAM, it's brilliant. Still lacks that overall kind of polished smoothness that iOS has. But overall, I'm very impressed with the performance on this phone. Next thing that I like, connectivity. It's got plenty of... Of connectivity features you've got uh, Wi-Fi 6 you've got 5G uh, which I can't take advantage of because um, <laughs> there's no 5G where I live and I'm really in the city um, it's got dual sim slots uh, and oh, I, <laughs> I missed a bunch of things actually when I was um, doing my don't like so there's no mi micro SD card slot and I hate that it doesn't have a micro SD card slot because I love consuming media on Android devices, uh, just the ability to have it as a mass storage and you can drag and drop files and you can pop in an SD card, say if I want to bring all eight seasons of Brooklyn Nine-Nine with me, I can just pop it on an SD card and away I go and if I don't need it anymore, I can take it out and put it in my wallet. I just don't like Samsung removing features that are beneficial to the consumer. Now maybe they're trying to hustle you into buying more storage, but yeah, I don't know. They've sacrificed the, uh, the micro SD card for dual SIM slots. Uh, so if you if your business phone and you've got a personal number that you want to have on the same phone then that's perfect for you or if you've got a scumbag sim card or if you've got a prepaid sim card that you can get more data on go hard with that it's also got eSIM um, it's got Wi-Fi sharing through hotspot which I love about these Samsung phones the connectivity is is really good there's a lot of options in there I guess one thing to point out is is signal is is obviously still not going to be as good as an iOS device. Uh, or an iPhone for that matter because iPhones are just king of signals and antennas and all that um, especially after the iPhone 4 debacle they've taken it really seriously but to be honest I haven't noticed any any strange signal issues with this phone um, maybe it's dependent on your carrier and your proximity to cell towers but it's something to bear in mind as well the next thing that I like about this phone is the customizability and the feature set now if I went through all the features on this phone this video would be like a day long uh, but I'll go through some of my favorite ones. Firstly, Android, just uh, again, um, speaking of that file system, it's so much more superior to iOS. Uh, you can drag and drop media files, and I love VLC. You know, I've got, um, if I go into my videos, I've got um, a bunch of top gear on here that I can, um, that I just dragged over from my PC. 
and uh, yeah, there's just less restrictions, a little bit more customizability. I love Android for that, and it's definitely a reason why I keep both an Android and an iOS phone in my pocket, or in my rotation, rather. You've got split-screen multitasking, so a little demonstration of that real quick. One of my favorite ways to use this phone, obviously to take advantage of the big canvas, is to use split-screen multitasking. Now, I'm going to open up Maps, and I'm going to kind of pinch away um, to avoid putting my location on blast but I flip this over and if you recall I had my uh, magnet applied to my aramid case so I'd pop that on my car and I can use this for navigation and also control music and see what's next in my queue on Spotify uh, and yeah it's just so cool uh, that you can do this now you can do this on a regular Samsung phone or an Android phone but it's just you know having that bigger display is that is just what enhances the experience and there's just a lot of ways that you can kind of customize it you can make spotify bigger you can make spotify smaller you can have like the pop-up windows um, another fun way to use it is with um, internet browsing and reddit uh, so say you're scrolling through reddit you see something that you kind of want to fact check you can open up your browser and then you know do do a little google search or search your scholarly journals and all that no i'm just kidding no one does that and it's just you know it's it's awesome for productivity um, the uh, uh, fun way as well is to use flex mode. Um, so when you're watching a video, you can have this propped up like kind of like a mini laptop. And then you can have your video playing here and you can scroll through what's next or you can scroll through the comments. Uh, and that's something that I like to do on some videos is to scroll through the comments while I'm watching it. Um, and it's awesome if, as well if you're like at work and you have, uh, ha and you have lunch um, and you don't really have anywhere to prop up your phone. Bam, this is like an automatic... Uh, way to watch your videos now that obviously the aspect ratio is going to be a bit awkward but it's something that i can look over because it's just so cool you also have reverse wireless charge so you can charge uh, another phone with the phone's battery um, now you've all heard of that most of you have probably heard of that feature so i won't demonstrate it uh, and also as i said before wi-fi sharing and kind of bleeding into the next thing that i like about this phone is the innovation Samsung is not a company that is afraid to bring out some new technology, especially like this folding uh, mechanism and the S Pen. Like the fact that you can use an S Pen on this screen is crazy. Uh, I didn't actually buy the S Pen because I'm not a frequent user of it, but for someone who does need to mark up documents or needs a stylus for the phone, or you're a drawer and you want to kind of customize something on Photoshop, uh, you're working on a design and you want to make some adjustments on the road you can do that with the s pen and i love that uh, i love the ability uh, the abilities that it affords you also have uh, wireless decks with samsung so if you have like a monitor you can plug it into a USB C monitor and use it that way as a as a computer you can plug in a mouse and keyboard or you can use it wirelessly when you cast to a tv or a wi-fi enabled monitor which is really cool now it's something that i don't use because i already have a computer plugged into my monitor um, but it, I could see how it would be useful if you had like a smart TV and you wanted to still browse through your phone but cast something to that to watch. Yeah, there's just so many cool features on this phone and the amount, again, going back to that customizability, just the fact that you can, you know, have the Protect battery and then you have Samsung Labs where you can change the aspect ratios of the apps and you can choose uh, what apps continue on the cover screen and what continue on the main screen. Um, you know, you've got your one-handed mode. Um, oh okay google assistant is is chilling out there this is the reason why you're buying this phone um especially if you're an ios user is that you have the customizability and the the ability of this the possibilities that this large display affords you in consuming your content uh, now as i said my my favorite way to to use this phone is just it's just an enhanced way to browse through social media and to watch my videos if i'm away from a computer like you know, you can't tell me that this is a cool Twitter experience. You see more on the screen, and I mean, obviously the aspect ratios are a little bit awkward, but if you have a video like this, and now it's some, some politics type type stuff, which, you know, I'll, I'll probably scroll past. But if it's like a wide uh, video, I think maybe Reddit's the best example of that, is um, you know, some, hopefully nothing's too savage on here. Uh, like, I know this is an ad, but if you have a video playing like this, it just looks awesome in this aspect ratio. And, I mean, the tall display, uh, the tall pictures, it kind of falls apart there. Uh, but let's say, you know, I, I go on this post, I can look at the comments and scroll through that and still watch the video at the top. 
Um, so yeah, that's a really awesome way to browse through socials and then also that, that split screen and you know consuming your news articles. Now there's you know, a lot of corona going on up north. Um, reading on this is awesome. It's like a little book that you obviously can fold up um, but you can fit more text on and the images look nice and crisp. Um, shout out to Auntie Jacinda, and then yeah, on Instagram as well. Like you know, seeing the the wide, uh, seeing everything just blown up, it just looks so sick. Whew. Okay, that's enough of me raving about this phone. As you can tell, I love it. Now, can it be my main phone? I don't. I don't think so. I just miss. I would miss iOS too much. Although I love the folding form factor, it's not enough for me to ditch my iPhone. But that being said, like if you're if you're not tied into the Apple ecosystem, this is going to be something that you really love. There is still a ways to go for this foldable technology to mature, but it's awesome to see the possibilities and, you know, Samsung taking a bit of a chance. Like, who knows if the future is in foldables or not? It's still cool that they're, they're willing to take a jump and have, they've, able, they've been able to help mature this technology into what it is today. Now, I'm, I'm interested to see what the Fold 4, if they ever come out with that, is going to be like, or if they're going to be like, if they're going to follow in the footsteps in the footsteps of Oppo where they have the phone that slides out that that gets wider but i think the improvements that have been made to this phone are really awesome especially when you look back to the fold 1 and the at the pace at which this technology is developing is is really cool to watch and as i said at the beginning of this video this has gotten me excited about the future of the smartphone the future of technology and the future of what's next in terms of a smartphone or how we perceive like a day-to-day -day device like, i think it's just absolutely cool that we can we can we live in an age where we can fold our phones in half uh and that's that's probably one of the biggest reasons why you're gonna buy one of these phones it makes you feel good it makes you feel like the man when you're using it Okay, now that's, uh, yeah, those are just a whole bunch of thoughts that I've just vomited out into this one video, and I think it's almost going to be an hour long, so if you've stayed all the way to the end, thank you so much. I really do appreciate you having to listen to what I say. Um, if you've got any opinions, if you have a fold, let me know how you're going with it, how what you like about it, what you don't. Uh, if you are thinking about a fold, what's holding you back? If you're, if you're an iOS user, if you're a Samsung Knight, if you are Team Pixel, let me know. Um, I'd love to start a conversation with you in the comments um, down below. Now, what's next? Um, this little guy. <laughs> I'm going to be doing a iPhone 13 mini review and uh, kind of uh, t talking about my love affair with it and why I've chosen it as my main phone now. And I suppose you can tell, like, this is currently my rotation. Uh, I've got my iPhone as my main phone and I figured that I'd pick up a 13 mini because... Um, if I have the Fold, then having a 12 Pro Max as well in my pocket is going to be a bit bulky, so this is a, a good compromise to have um, as kind of like a hybrid setup. You know, you have your iOS for doing your regular activities, and you have your Galaxy for all your fun. Now, I saw this on Reddit, and I think it's quite funny, and don't take me too seriously on this, but iPhone to me is like, this is this is wifey, like someone you can depend on, a phone you can depend on, it's uh, it's reliable, um, you know it's just going to work, and it's going to get all your regular daily activities done, but it's there's not really anything particularly exciting about it, it's just a phone and it works, and you can rely on it, and you're glad to have it in your life. Whereas this, well, this is your side chick, like this is, this is the phone that, introduces a little bit of drama into your life it's got more features it's more exciting uh and you know it's but it's not something that i want to rely on and it's not something that um at least for me that i can use in a day-to-day -day setting but you know if every once in a while when you want to have a little bit of fun if you want to have a little bit more features and and do a little bit more crazy things with with your phone um let's not lose context this is this is it. This is the Galaxy Z Fold. That's what it is. It's a side chick, and um, both are, are awesome in that respect. That you, we can have we have choices like this. Um, now, yeah, saying things like that is probably why I'm still single. I'm talking about phones like they're my wife and my side chick, but 
uh it's, this is fun like we're just having fun with the reviews and and i just love the fact that i can talk about my opinion and share it with you guys especially if uh, if you are on the fence or if you wanted to hear something about this phone or if you you know i i hope that i i'm able to kind of help you in your purchase decision or if reaffirm your purchase decision if you've already bought a fold and you're now just checking out reviews anyways uh this this video has gone on for for long enough so thank you so much for watching as, uh, as i said especially if you've made it to the end i really do appreciate it if you uh, did enjoy leave a like comment down below what your thoughts are also subscribe if you're new and i will be back very shortly with that iphone 13 mini thoughts slash reviews video until then i'll catch you guys later. Peace.